Did you know that Sri Lanka possesses the maritime skills and capabilities that are sought after by the world? Advantis has been a pioneer in this industry and has played a key role in placing Sri Lanka on the global maritime map. Here to talk about this is Surinder Diabru, Director and CEO of Sri Lanka Shipping, a subsidiary of Advantis. Hi Surinder, welcome to the Haley's podcast and thank you so much for joining us. Really excited to have this chat with you about the maritime industry, which I think is a unique area to be in. Um, so tell us a little bit about your journey and how did you get to be in this particular industry? Firstly, thank you for, for having me. So how did I get into this industry? Firstly, my father was in the marine industry as well. Right? But after my A-levels, I, I wanted to join and get straight into a job. Um, so I joined Colombo Dockyard for a short period of time and then I realized that a more formal education would yeah. be better. Um, so I applied for this course in uh, a place called Falmouth, which is in the southwest of England, which is part of the University of Plymouth, mm. uh, to study the design of uh, small crafts. So, uh, um, you know, uh, FRP, uh, yachts, things like mm -hmm. that, okay. right? And while I was doing that, I realized that the scope there was not enough. There's, it was a very niche area to be in. So it, um, so at that point, I decided I'll go into proper naval architecture. So I basically went to the other side of England, to the University of Newcastle, and I studied naval architecture there. Okay. Um, it was fantastic four years. And um, then I was fortunate enough to get a job at, the, at uh, Dry Docks World. Uh, it's part of uh, the DP World Group, okay. which was in Dubai. Mm. So I was there from 2002 right up to 2008. Mm. And then there were a few personal issues in Sri Lanka. So I, I flew back uh, quickly and I started working for my father mm. for about two years. Um, and then I had, uh, again, a connection from Dubai Dry Docks uh, connected me with another gentleman who was planning to build ships in Sri Lanka. Okay. And uh, he wanted somebody to look after those uh, projects. Mm -hmm. And so I joined the Singaporean company, therefore, but based in Sri Lanka, which was great. Um, and I was with them till 2017 yeah. when I joined um, Advantis or Sri Lanka Shipping. Okay, in 2017. Okay, so I mean, I guess one of the exciting things about the industry is the actual the sea going part, right? So did you, you never wanted to pursue that? Or Actually, I that, did. Okay. Actually, I did. And um, so my father, like I said, was a chief engineer. Okay. And he said, you know, what you think about going to sea mm and the romance of the sea mm -hmm. and all of that that okay. everybody talks about mm -hmm. is no more. Uh, when we were small and I used to accompany on board the ships, you go into a harbor okay. and because it was bulk carriers, the ship will be there for, I don't know, two weeks, three weeks while they took all the tea out wow. and all the bulks out. But now we're on container ships, right? So you mm -hmm. come into a port, six to 12 hours, you turn around and you go out. Mm -hmm. So it's not what I thought, uh, what it is those days. Okay. So I thought I still like the sea. So mm -hmm. I thought ship design, maritime, whatever would better suit me. Okay. Okay, great. So like what about Advantis and okay, so your job at Advantis, like how would you explain it to someone who's not from the industry? Like what is it that you do exactly? So I I had Sri Lanka shipping, mm. uh, which is well, probably the largest uh, ship owning organization in Sri Lanka. Okay. Um, we have a range of vessels from cement carriers going down to utility boats. Mm. Um, so my role at Sri Lanka shipping has changed a lot from project management. Mm. It's very much more uh, administrating. Yeah. There's a lot of commercials, which I really enjoy. Um, and there's the people that you have to make sure are going to be okay through everything and the growth of the companies and things like that, which uh, make you want to get up and come to work, right? So, mm. so that's so my role is shipping mm. a bit of it, making sure that it's sustainable, 
and that the right decisions are made as often as possible. Is that good even? Oh. I guess, yeah, that's essentially what you do. No? Um, so, I mean, if we are to talk about Advantis, which is the larger group that you represent, I mean, I think even within Haley's, Advantis has, has like its own unique culture, right? So, I mean, what has Advantis meant to you and like, what do you feel are the defining characteristics of that group? So, funny thing about Advantis is that, uh, so like I said, father was in the same industry, mm -hmm. worked with Advantis. So, I've always... Um, seen Advantis as a place to work. Okay. Right. So, and why is Advantis unique? I think one thing that we have is I think we have the right people to do the right job. Mm. And we have uh, inculcated a culture that everybody, that we try to make sure that everybody has you know, especially the values which we're driving, you know, trust. We have, um, you know, we try to give opportunities. We celebrate our victories. Uh, we care about each other. Mm. And more than anything, we try to be humble about everything that we do. Mm. And we hope that, and we try very hard to make sure that everybody, we have 2,500 people, permanent and uh, contract, have those values mm. and I think it's worked. It, mm. uh, there's a huge drive to, in all aspects, mm. to get further along. And Advantis also knows how to have fun, no? Celebration yeah. is part yeah. of it, right? True. Celebration is very much a part of it. Mm. Great. So, um, I mean, I think we should also really talk about the capabilities of Advantis, right? Because I think you all are at an international level and I think few people know this, right? So, like, tell me, like, in your career, what are the highlights that, you know, Advantis, the greatest achievements in your view? Okay. So, it's interesting. I was, I was thinking about this and we, we give services to small merchants who bring in their first container full of sugar to this country and want to start a business and they want somebody who has some sort of some sort of recognition in the industry to come and count or say that to do a tally of it or to try and see whether to put a seal of endorsement right so we have we work there we also have and we own, we manage, we operate and we charter ships to the largest shipment producers in India who work globally. So that's the kind of scale from there to there and everything in between uh, Advantis does. Um, if you take myself uh, as Sri Lanka shipping, probably one of my, you know, something that I'm very proud of is the fact that we became the first Sri Lankan ship owner or operator to tow an oil rig mm. from India oh, yeah. mm. uh, to a place called Batam, which is in Indonesia. Okay. So a Sri Lankan ship owner hadn't done it before. Wow. The year before that, we had uh, bought this vessel called the Virgo. Mm. It is a 155 bollard pull. Uh, anchor handling tug, mm. uh, which is geared to uh, unhook and support these rigs mm. and then tow them to wherever they need to go. Mm. Uh, so it was expertise we didn't have at the time. Um, okay. So what we did was we hired Indonesian crew on board the ship mm. to, uh, and we had the Sri Lankan crew, so there would be a knowledge transfer there as well. Um, and if you go back, you know, to getting the job, uh, we, we used to work with these brokers, these British brokers, and the, the charter or the guy who wanted to move this thing, he said, you know, these guys haven't done this. Um, are you sure they can do it? And I remember these words, I mean, the, the, this broker, he said, you know, they're a, they a small shipping company, mm -hmm but they have a very big heart. Oh, wow. So if they say they'll do it, 
they are somehow get it done. Mm. And that was the first. That was in uh, 2019. Okay. And after that, we've done eight, nine, ten. Wow. Um, okay. And we've we are kind of in the market. We are established now. Mm. And to be honest, right now, we've just broken another sort of boundary for us. We always concentrated from Dubai to Singapore, as Sri Lanka shipping is concerned. And uh, we just got a job to move uh, a floating storage platform, FSO, mm. from West Africa all the way to Dubai, or to the Middle East, to Khan. Wow. Okay. So it's about, a, it's a 14,000 kilometer job. So, so that's... I mean, these are like firsts for the Sri Lankan industry, right? Like Pretty much, I be? think, yeah. I mean, I would have thought, so I, I don't... You don't know for sure. But I don't know for sure, but mm. I think so. Okay. I, I haven't heard it being done before. Okay. So. You also do like salvage operations, right? Any yep. like interesting things you want to share? So we we'll call ourselves a common user salvage operator. Okay. So when you have, salvage is a very expensive business to be in, right? Mm. So if you need to have the necessary equipment to do a proper salvage job, mm. you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars of equipment that you need to have. Right, let's maybe talk about the people aspect, right? Because I think um, it's of course a very kind of a high risk job, right? Especially the sea going part. So, I mean, how are you taking care of your people and what sort of like proposition are you offering? Yeah, it is high risk, right? So, especially if you take the salvage, the salvage work, when other people are trying to leave, we are going in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, it's high risk. Uh, it's not an easy job, seafaring. Like like I said, some time ago, it wasn't. You go to Rome for two mm -hmm. weeks and you're there. Yeah. Uh, it's a six. Uh, you know, you're in eight hours you're out. Your contracts are typically four months, right? So you leave your families for four months and you're gone, mm. right? Uh, very recently, there was an incident where um, there was a child who had a seafarer's child who had uh, met with an accident mm. and he was in the middle, he's on his way to uh, West Africa, mm. right? Mm. And there's a storm coming, they're trying to find shelter. Mm. So the best we can possibly do is, you know, facilitate communication. Mm. Um, but in terms of what do we do to make their lives better, uh, we try very, we've started initiatives to sort of, do you know the GPTW that we do? Drift, for, yeah. So we, it's, it's a little bit difficult to do it on a board of ship because the people sort of constantly keep changing. Mm -hmm. but, but we've done a similar thing to find out what their problems are. They're very, very different to what you and I yeah, would have. Exactly. Uh, so we are trying to address those. Mm. Um, obviously, when it comes to seafaring, there are training, mandatory training courses that need to get done mm -hmm. so that you could become, let's say, for example, from a, from a second officer to a chief officer to a captain, okay. right? So that's traditionally what seafarers are taught to do. Uh, we're looking at the softer skills also. So, uh, you know, teamwork, leadership, all of those things as well, so that they have a little bit more to offer the world and, mm -hmm. you know, look at things like that. Uh, we make sure that there's no shortage of food. Um, and, you know, we are also trying to look at mechanisms where we have hotlines uh, okay. or, um, you know, various ways to ensure or to give the seafarer comfort that their families are going to be okay. Looked after, no? Yeah. yeah. So it actually worked. I mean, um, we have this number now and that's how this lady contacted us and you know because you can't just call the ship yeah right uh, so we do our best mm -hmm. I, i'm sure that we can improve a lot but we are trying very hard to do that yeah because in a way you are kind of responsible for the family as well no unlike in other jobs where you know of course yeah. i think we are we are responsible for the families Anything. of everybody who yes works. Yeah. yeah yeah that's fair 
Okay, so um, I mean, let's talk about the industry as a whole. And I know it's an industry that is evolving rapidly, right? Like a lot of changes, a lot of focus on maybe sustainability, health and safety, things like that. So like how is Advantis gearing up for this? Are we ready to kind of take on the challenges? Yeah, so from a, sh from a shipping perspective? Yeah. yeah. Um, yes, so we are gearing up for it. Mm. Um, the IEMO, which is the International Maritime Organizations, have very clear-cut guidelines on what they want to achieve in terms of uh, sustainability. Mm. Uh, essentially, it is uh, net zero by 2050. Mm. Um, and so they are now... So obviously what happened was that they created a target and said the baseline is 2008 mm -hmm. and you have to reduce uh, emissions by 20% on a particular year. I think it's 2030, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. Uh, but there's a new rule that's going to come out actually where they're going to say we will cut down is not good enough a thing to say. Mm -hmm. And from 2027, you need to come up and tell us how you're going to do that. The plan. The plan, Yeah. right? Um, so we are gearing up. Mm. Uh, like I, we are considering buying more vessels. Okay. So we are looking at the sustainability angle as well mm -hmm. going forward. Um, so I, what I could say is we are gearing up. Mm -hmm. I don't think we are quite 100% ready for it, but I think we are in the right direction, you know, right foot forward. And I think we'll be okay. I mean, anyway, these changes, you can't do them overnight, right? It's a gradual process and it's a journey. And I think if you have that commitment, then you we can. We need to have the commitment, yeah. definitely. And you can't do it overnight. Exactly. Obviously. Yeah. And yeah. it's uh, when it comes to sustainability, it's not mm -hmm. just, you know, you and I can't do it. Yeah, You have exactly. the whole, I mean, everybody needs. It's a collective, collective effort, Collective right? effort. Because so. the problems are like universal almost. Yeah, yeah so. Great. Right, so okay, before we wrap up, um, any ad like what's the advice you can give the younger generations? Maybe it could be someone who's joining Haley's, it could be someone who's joining Advantis, uh, because I know Advantis has a lot of young, young employees, right? So maybe something you have learned along the way. Be truly who you are, I think. Hmm. You know, there's always a place for you. Hmm. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll. Haley's is a fabulous place to work. I worked in, uh, sorry, uh, an Advantis. Mm -hmm. I worked in three continents, so many companies. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying this the most. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so that's, that's uh, something to say for it. Uh, but I will say something that my dad told me. Um, didn't realize how deep it was uh, just a couple of days before he passed away. Okay. Um, he said, every decision you make, Make sure it's not with anger, make sure it's not with greed, and make sure it's not with delusion. And if you get these three right, your decisions will never be wrong. Mm. So I try to live by it. Mm. I try, yeah, I, I, mm. I do say try. I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, be who you are. There's always a place for you. Make the right decisions. An advantage is an fabulous place to work hmm. great thank you so much fantastic chat surinda i hope you enjoyed the chat as well i did and thank yeah, you very look much look forward to talking with you again soon okay. thank you